Hello everyone and welcome to the moment you've all been waiting for. It is round three of this year's Norway Chess and it's Hikaru Nakamura versus Magnus Carlsen. Now, uh, everyone was expecting a thriller in the classical time section, but uh, the classical game ended in a very, very quick draw. Uh, I'm going to show it that they actually played a very exciting opening. They played the martial attack, but um, uh, they, they played a well-known line, which just ends up in a draw. So I'm just going to quickly go uh, over the classical game and then we are going to discuss what happened in the Armageddon. So in the classical section we had the uh, martial attack so of course this it started off with a Rui Lopez knight of six castles bishop d7 rook e1 b5 bishop to b3 castle c3 and pawn to d5 uh, Magnus opted for the martial attack e captures on d5 knight captures knight captures knight captures rook captures and pawn to c6 the uh, so-called modern variation of the martial attack we have d3 bishop to d6 and rook to e1 so everything that we've seen many many times bishop to f5 now and Queen to f3. We have bush, uh, queen to h4 now going for queen captures on h2. g3 defending it, queen to h3 and knight to d2. Again, all been seen before. A rook e to a8. Uh, and knight to e4 we have bishop to g4 attacking the queen queen to g2 and now uh, we have a queen trade captures captures and now pawn to f5 and it seems like uh, white uh, should be lost here uh, as the rook on e1 would hang once the once the knight moves but luckily there is pawn to h3 attacks the bishop bishop moves and now even bishop to f4 offers a trade of dark square bishops captures captures and now f captures on e4 we have d captures on e4 so it seems that uh, the knight on d5 will hang uh, but again all been seen before bishop to f3 check and this quickly concluded into a draw so now you have to capture uh, rook captures on f4 check g3 rook f captures on e4 the rooks got traded off and now of course you don't want to allow rook to e2 so king f3 and now they just repeat it rook to f4 check king g3 rook to e4 king f3 and a few more moves and they repeated uh, up until move 31 and they agreed to a draw and they pretty much played the entire game in five minutes yeah you know which is pretty crazy as it's it's a classical game but um, uh, basically they're showing off their, their great uh, theory knowledge of the martial attack. So now we go into the Armageddon game and the Armageddon game features an even greater opening uh, no, it's not the Evans Gambit, I know, uh, but it features the King's Gambit. So here, Hikaru played pawn to e4, we have pawn to e5, and now Hikaru goes for it. Pawn to f4, he goes for the King's Gambit, and this is where uh, the, the gloves are definitely off. This is not ending in a draw. So e captures on f4, Magnus accepts the Gambit, even though, okay, nowadays it's popular to even go for the for the Falkbeer counter Gambit, Magnus, uh, you know, meets the uh, Gambit head on. Knight to f3 and pawn to g5, in the style of the great players of the past like Paul Morphy, Otto Funders, and even Steinitz played it, Laskin played it. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, the, the 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 player with the most positions of um, uh, of this exact position would be Adolf Anderson. So here pawn to h4 and now g4 attacking the knight and now knight to e5. There are even some moves where d4 can be played even bishop to c4 but that would be uh, you know, uh, underestim uh, underestimating Magnus a bit too much. So knight to e5 and now pawn to d6, chasing away the knight. Knight to f6 is the most common move here. We have pawn to d6 by Magnus uh, asking Hikaru is he maybe interested in a knight captures on f7. Even though this looks like a move that you would play in blitz and bullet, it has only been played once. Uh, by the great attacker of the past, Karl Schlechta, uh, who also um, uh, was a World Chess Championship challenger. He played it against Geza Marozzi and he even got a very nice game, but uh, as the move is objectively bad, he lost in some 45 moves. But that was the only instance where it was played. Uh, so, of course, uh, Knight captures on g4. This is the standard way to play this. Knight to f6, and now a Knight captures on f6. We have Queen captures on f6, and now Knight to c3 and d4 are the most common moves here, and it makes sense. You uh, Pretty much everyone plays Knight to c3 instantly because the queen is on f6 and you really want to play knight to d5 and attack that queen but uh, Hikaru just plays pawn to d3 it's a weird move to play in, in a crazy position like the king's gambit but uh, it's also a new move so uh, as of move 8 we have a completely new game so let's see how Magnus deals with this novelty knight to c6 we have queen to f3 uh, going after the f4 pawn and the Magnus just defends it bishop to h6 uh, we have queen to f2 now not to worrying about knight to d4 attacking the queen putting pressure on the c2 pawn and rook to g8 uh, just putting pressure 
uh, on Hikaru's king side. Next is uh, bishop to e6 and probably castling queen side. So knight to c3, bishop to e6, and here bishop to d2. Hikaru, uh, Magnus castles queen side, uh, and Hikaru does the same. We have queen to d4. Magnus very happy with his position, and uh, a draw is enough for him to win the game as this is Armageddon. So he offers uh, a queen trade, and Hikaru must decline. Even though objectively uh, trading queens is probably best, uh, we have queen back to e1, and now queen back to e5 by Magnus. We have knight to e2 now, uh, guarding that d4 square. Now you might even have some ideas of king to b1, c3, d4, and so on, if you can somehow defend the e4 pawn. Uh, and now pawn to f5 by Magnus. You might be thinking, but what about bishop captures on a2? Well, you could play it... Um... Uh, but uh, uh, Hikaru's plan is mostly to play g3, as the bishop on h6 is undefended, now capture on f4, and you don't really care about the a2 pawn. You, you have to play like this if you're playing for the win, and I mean, you have played the king's gambit, you can play the king's gambit and, you know, be all uh, turtle-like. So after knight to e2, Magnus plays pawn to f5, and now pawn to g3. With the same idea, the bishop on h6 is hanging. F captures um, uh, on e4, we have g captures on f4, attacking the queen. Queen to f5, and now knight to g3, attacking the queen and the pawn on e4. Queen to f7, now putting even more pressure on this diagonal, but uh, Hikaru doesn't care. He just plays pawn to f5, now exposing the dark square bishop to an attack, and also the light square bishop. Luckily, uh, the bishop on d2 can be captured with check, so Magnus plays this, bishop captures on d2, with check, rook captures, and now bishop to d7. Uh, again, uh, ignoring this uh, uh, bishop here, as then knight captures on e4 would be very strong. So just bishop to d7, and now he's asking, are you maybe interested uh, in, in this pawn? Uh, and uh, while it can be played, now queen captures on a2 would be much scarier. So queen, uh, king to b1, now comes knight to e5, uh, putting uh, pressure on that f3 square, knight to f3 will be winning material. So queen to e3 by Hikaru, and e captures on d3. We have c captures on d3, not allowing the bishop to be captured, you really want your light square bishop to uh, grab hold of some long diagonal. We have bishop to c6, which Magnus does, attacking the rook here, and knight to e4. And here uh, we have king to b8. Uh, it's uh, it's sort of an uh, unnecessary, necessary move, because if you play the move that you really want to play, queen captures on f5, then you run into bishop to h3, and your king is on c8. And even though you can defend this, for example, knight to g4, uh, let's say queen to e2 going after the knight, and you can even play pawn to h5. It's just very annoying to have your uh, all of your pieces on the same diagonal as uh, Hikaru's light square bishop, let's say rook to f1, and you have to burn a lot of time here looking for answers. So after knight to e4, Magnus just uh, moves the king, king to b8. He's not in any rush to win this. He's, like I said, very, very happy with a draw. Uh, bishop to h3, and now rook d to e8. Uh, we have rook to c1 now, uh, putting pressure on uh, Magnus' king side, and now bishop to d5. Magnus again puts pressure on that a2 pawn, and because it's Armageddon, because he doesn't want to uh, waste time for nothing, he misses an instant win here. Uh, do you see the instant win here? It's not an easy one to spot. Feel free to pause the video and try to find this idea uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, always being a true master of tactics. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight captures on d3. Just removing the defender of the knight on e4. Yes, it is as simple as that. Uh, now, of course, uh, everyone sees that if rook captures, bishop captures on e4, skewers the rook, and there is no uh, defending this. The problem, and probably why Magnus decided against this, is maybe he saw rook captures on c6, sort of Hikaru giving up the rook for two pieces. Uh, but even this loses the knight to b4, attacks the rook and also threatens queen captures on a2, and there is no defense here. You have to defend against the uh, uh, checkmate, so queen captures captures, and now you're just capturing the rook, and you are, uh, of course, completely winning here, uh, up the exchange, uh, up a pawn, you know, another another trouble in the world. So after rook to c1, Magnus misses this, he plays bishop to d5, and now rook to e2. Probably also, uh, Magnus doesn't actually need to win, he's happy with a draw, so maybe that's why he's not um, looking for uh, a for, for, you know, for the killing blow too much. Uh, bishop captures on a2 with check, king to a1, and now bishop back to d5, and Hikaru goes knight to g5. That was the whole point of giving up the pawn on a2, uh, but it doesn't work. Uh, okay, if Magnus plays the queen to a weird square, then it could be very strong if the knight uh, comes to e6 with some sort of a, a forcing maneuver, but after queen to d7, there is nothing here. Now, uh, you don't even have a move like um, a d4, as everything is nicely defended, and also checkmate is being threatened. 
if you play something like f6, which is also kind of the idea, the knight on g5 uh, prepares f6, f7, uh, but here if you play f6, uh, just queen to a4 check, and you run into one of the oldest checkmates in the book. As the queen is covering c2, you just have bishop to a2 check, king a1, bishop to b3, a discovery from the queen, uh, king to b1, and queen to a2 will be checkmate. It's a very nice mate to know, uh, because you will always uh, have it, you know, you, uh, you won't have to calculate 10 moves ahead, it's enough to calculate 6 if you know that this checkmate exists. So here, queen to d4, uh, now opening up the d file for the rook and also guarding that a4 square, uh, so so the black king, uh, queen cannot deliver check. Queen to b5 now, going uh, for, for the a file, uh, you know, via different means. So king to b1 and now even knight to c6, attacking the queen. Uh, rook captures on e8 with check, rook captures and now queen to c3. Now comes bishop to b3 and now queen to a4, queen to a2 check is coming. Will it be checkmate or just a check? That's up to Hikaru. Of course, Hikaru will try to avoid this. He played knight to e4. Uh, at least, at least uh, this closes off the e file for the black rook. Queen to a4, threatening mate in one, and now he car plays rook to f1. He has to allow queen to a2 check, but Magnus doesn't rush it. He plays knight to d4, brings another piece into the attack. Now even more squares are being covered um, in front of the white king. Uh, bishop to g4, and now just bishop to c2 with check. d5 is also winning. Uh, I mean, pretty much any move is winning here. Uh, Magnus opts for bishop to c2 check, king to c1, and now queen to a1. One with check. We have king to d2, only move for white. Queen captures on f1, and now uh, the problem is, okay, now queen captures on d4 is possible, and it is what Hikaru played, but it is not enough. Bishop captures on d3, and there is nothing you can do. If you capture the bishop, for example, queen captures, just queen to f4 with check, and once the king moves, you will play rook captures on e4, and you're up the exchange, you, you, you're up too much material, the white king is uh, on the run, there, there is no playing this. So after bishop captures on d3, Hikaru tried one last idea, knight to f6, uh, but... Um, uh, to no avail. Magnus just played rook to e2 with check, and he was in this position on move 40 that Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, you, you either get checkmated or you accept the, the, the gift on d3, uh, king captures, now comes queen to d1 with check, and it doesn't matter what you do, king to c4 or queen to c3, uh, all runs into the, pre pretty much the same idea. You will go queen to a4 with check, attack the king. Once the king goes back, let's say king to d3, now queen to c2 is checkmate, uh, but pretty much uh, any other square you go to either loses the queen or, you know, you, you, you just get checkmated or both. Uh, so yeah, uh, very nicely done by Magnus. Uh, uh, Hikaru did play, uh, you know, okay, he allowed Magnus, no one allows Magnus to go for the martial attack. He allowed it, he showed that, you know, he has nothing to fear from Magnus uh, with the white pieces in the martial. Uh, he went for a quick draw. It was sort of a gambity thing, not, not just the uh, opening of choice, but also the, the entire strategy, and then went for an even uh, greater gambit. Uh, okay, first he allowed Magnus the, the martial uh, attack, but then he went for the king's gambit, which is, you know, the, the crown of chess openings basically when you play the king's gambit you know that you are a true gentleman and that uh, you know everyone in the world uh, salutes you you know if they are somewhere in a bar or, or a library they, they will salute you uh you know for at least a week uh so yeah uh, too bad for hikaru it didn't work for him but hikaru uh, magnus also shows uh that he knows um the theory of of king's gambit quite well and that it will not be that easy to challenge him even in a lower time control such as um, armageddon but yeah you have to win you have to try something so king's gambit was definitely the way to go uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. First game that we are covering from round three, as it is the first one that finished. So there we have it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Buntiak Piang, uh, Revshing Reptiles YouTube, Michal Sakarias, David Kasparian, and Brandon Fukuda for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this uh, wonderful tournament until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and uh, have an excellent rest of your day.